yesterday we actually the night before we got a text message from our concrete friend and we knew he was going to be doing a slab in the next few days turns out he did it yesterday so we had plans to work on getting the membrane and drain tile and stuff in we ended up spending uh, a little over eight hours working on a slab which was super exciting for Alyssa and I. It was exhausting, but we got some experience, which was really cool. And that's gonna be massive when it comes to mostly kind of picking who to help us with the slab that we're gonna do, and then coming up with a strategy. Uh, we've spent a little time talking about this morning and it sounds like we are both in agreement that we need to have somebody here who is very savvy with concrete, more as oversight, actually purely as oversight. Sunday evening after a brief swim, we did some work together to try to figure out a reliable way to apply this blue skin membrane. This is a 60 mil waterproof membrane. In a nutshell, we actually have two membranes. This is a three foot wide membrane. And what we're doing here is uh, membraning up from the bottom of the footing, over the footing, and then up the wall about two feet. And the theory behind this is that once the walls are poured, we will actually come back with a wider membrane, which is a four foot membrane, and reach down the wall and overlap these two membranes. And I need to double check, there's actually a specification in the International Concrete Code for how much these membranes need to overlap. The reason we're doing that is we wanna get the drain tile and the rock and filter fabric in now because doing that once the walls are poured we feel like is going to be way more challenging i'm sure we've covered all that about 15 times in our videos but we're starting fresh because it's been a couple of days since we've worked on this we also have a lot of cleanup to do kind of uh, little fixes to kind of get the project back to a reset i'm going to be working on this buttress we need to move this buttress over one inch. I may do some measuring here to see if we can move it over two inches because that would allow us to do a perfect chamfer here. The, the problem, the bottleneck, is this number six rebar must be three inches in from the form. Right now it's two inches. Ideally, this is centered over the buttress footing, which it is right now, but when we placed these rebar, they slowly migrated toward the inside of where the buttress is gonna be located. So after discussing this with the engineer, we've agreed to move this form about one inch over, which will put us at a happy spot with all of those dowels. It's gonna take quite a bit of work. Uh, something that's clear with when working with these ICFs, because of getting the rebar down inside, zip tying, all of these things that when you have to undo anything it turns into quite the substantial project it's not a matter of just take that block out there's a lot of rebar that has to come out because everything's very intertwined i do have to say when we first were researching icfs and they said that all you have to do is glue the icf to the footing with this kind of spray foam adhesive i thought to myself really like that's enough that's good enough and i will have to say that at first the adhesive almost seems like kind of cute i don't even know what the word is like not even remotely close to adequate but after it hardens uh 30 to 45 minutes or even an hour later and of course a couple days later you can see that this adhesive is holding these blocks fine in fact if you try to move this wall at all, it will not move. I mean, you could bash into it, of course, and dislodge the adhesive, but, you know, applied sparingly across the entire wall, incredible holding power. Alyssa's hard at work on getting some videos out for you guys. We're quite a bit behind, as always. But she's been a very hard worker, and we're very thankful that she spends so much time making the videos fun and interesting. Believe me, she has hours of footage to chew through to get it down to something that's not long and boring so I'm gonna be working on this stuff and then hopefully later she can join me it's definitely gonna take two of us to get the membrane on the outside here it also looks like we overlooked some of the frost protection on the footing over here on the east side um, it's really hard over here because the dirt the the dirt is so powdery that getting the footing clean clean enough uh, long enough to get the foam to adhere out here is just a nightmare. It's like just pure silt. I forgot to mention, I knew this was gonna happen. We have been very fortunate slash unfortunate that we've had long spell of dry weather. It's been very hot, we've been miserable, we whine about it in every single video, but it has been very conducive 
to getting this project done. Part of the reason we're pushing to get through the footing and the walls and the slab, I guess the concrete, is so that weather does not end up creating a problem for this project. And it looks like the next two to three days we have thunderstorms in the forecast. There's no clouds and the weather says the chance of precipitation is none, but we all know what thunderstorms mean. They could mean torrential downpours in a very isolated area. So we're back under the gun. We do have some family that's coming into town, which is lovely. We love visitors. It's always hard to take breaks and enjoy life. We, we're not really sure what that balance is or if there even, even is one. I mean, at this point, the balance is getting the house dried in before winter. We also have some wonderful friends that we really appreciate. They've been very, very helpful. They're camping this weekend. They've invited us to join them, take a break from the heat and just spend a little time dipping our toes in the water. I think we're gonna take them up on the offer, but between now and then, go time. So I sat down and took a break. I was looking for the documentation from Henry on their blue skin membrane, and I'm glad I looked that up. Uh, found some super helpful information. And then I had an idea. I'll get back to the membrane in a second. This in-wall bracing, which is these ladder looking pieces of metal, they slide down into the ICF once the wall's built. Their job is to true up the wall. So instead of kind of having this jog, 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 as you assemble blocks, they straighten the wall out. Well, this block or this support or brace wouldn't go in. Everything's too tight. And it perplexed me, kind of irritated me. I was a little frustrated because on top of all the other million problems we've been having, now our in-wall bracing doesn't fit. So I measured the block and the block's about seven and three quarters on the inside, which doesn't make sense because it's supposed to be a true eight inch block. So the gap inside's supposed to be eight inches and our in-wall bracing's about eight and an eighth. So it should fit, but it should fit snug, which is what it's supposed to do to create the proper spacing. Well, I had all of our workshop attendees go through and zip tie each block to the block next to it and the block below it. And they quickly figured out that if you zip tied them too tight, you'd end up pulling on these internal ties. And the net result is that the wall starts to collapse on itself like this. Turns out all that zip tying, I haven't quite tested this yet, but is what was keeping this in-wall bracing from fitting. So I've just spent about an hour undoing your work, guys. Sorry, I think you are supposed to zip tie blocks, but the order in which you do these tasks is so important. It looks like we need to put the in-wall bracing in first, which creates the trueness and squareness and everything. Then you can zip tie because you can't zip tie too tight once the in-wall bracing is in. I need to reread Lightform's documentation because I felt like I've really combed this stuff over very carefully and I've tried to really make a solid workflow. But so far we've run into several problems where we're doing the right things, but we're doing them in the wrong order. And in the end, 
we keep going backwards having to fix mistakes. Now this is looking nice and dry and clean down here, so I think I'll go ahead and get that foam installed. Well, I had a failed attempt at installing the foam on the footing here. And I hadn't actually gotten to this wall just yet. I've been working on truing up the walls. Just to restate, our chalk line is no good. We spent a lot of time chalk lining and acrylicing that. And since the building grew by one inch, the chalk lines are no good. Which means installing the block just got a whole lot more difficult. Because now we're basically trying to square the building again, make sure the corners are square, and then we have to make sure that the walls are straight. What tipped me off that we needed to work on this more was that when I went to square this buttress ICF to the wall, this ICF was going away. And in looking down this footing, this gap between the wall and the footing was growing immensely by the time it got down here. When we ran a string on this building, and it was very hard to see because you're leaning over the block and trying to look down over the block, which makes it impossible. So I have been running a string on the inside from corner to corner and then truing the wall. This involved removing all the insulation, truing up the wall, and then re-securing the wall. I went to apply the foam over here, and the foam is too wide because this wall is not true. And it looks like it's bowing out here in the middle, maybe upwards of half an inch. Because I'm not in this for profit and I'm trying to learn to be disciplined and apply the things that we've learned about our timber framing, timber framing workshop. Looks like we're gonna be unstacking this second row here and then we'll remove that adhesive and we'll make our best effort to get this wall trued up. Even if that foam on the outside of the footing doesn't fit perfectly, it should fit a whole lot better. I have to say that this is a very satisfying stage. I think a lot of people at this point would be very frustrated and maybe even bitter or angry. And I'm, I do have frustration, but it's more of a motivating type of frustration. I want this to be as right as it can be. So Liz is going to come help me and we'll make the wall good. Alyssa did a beautiful job getting our second row buttress connection made here. Took a lot of kind of just figuring out to get our common seam over here in the placement and make sure all of our dowels are where they need to be. And then we inserted our rebar, got all of our bends made, and we've got most all of the second row stacked. The reason we needed two rows again is to install the membrane. The membrane is going to start somewhere around here on the back side of the block and go down the face onto the footing. We learned a couple things about the in-wall bracing and I was right. I took all of these uh, horizontal zip ties off that were doing this 
and I'll be darned if the in-wall bracing fits. So definitely learning a lot about process. And then I got all this in-wall bracing in, real proud of myself, and realized I forgot to put the rebar in. Our plan calls for rebar at eight inches and then at a one quarter and one half and three quarters the height of the wall and the top of the wall. Our frost wall, which is here, is not actually in our plan. It's an as-built. So we're gonna change the rebar schedule just a little bit and double up on the rebar here. So we'll actually be starting our quarter of the height wall rebar on this row, which means that there's gonna be some extra rebar there. No biggie deal. So before Alyssa and I do the membrane, I'm gonna work on getting the rebar and the wall bracing in here, which is gonna make this wall a lot more rigid so that when we're monkeying around on it, it doesn't move and wiggle too much. Moving right along, we got the rest of the foam, foamed to the footing, undid some of the foam on the walls and we got those all true. And now I think we're ready for the waterproof membrane, right? Yep. Yesterday we figured out a technique that worked pretty well, we're gonna try it again, where we pre-cut a strip that was four inches. Alyssa already did that. Then we cut a secondary strip. Basically, we pulled a membrane back over the wall and removed the secondary strip, which is cut to the height of the footing. And then we adhere that while the paper remains on the very bottom. And then finally, we turn over the footing part, remove the paper, tuck it firmly into the footing and we're done. Worked pretty good yesterday. Okay, go for a ride. Okay, come on. Bugaboo, are you riding on a magic membrane? Hey. This is the last exit. The last good exit. There's no on ramps after this, Bugaboo. Pretty big rock, Bugaboo. Hold on. Okay, it's time to get off. You can only be cute for the camera for so long. Hey, oh my goodness. Ooh, make a face that gets clicks. Hey, make a face that gets clicks. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, that's a pretty good angle. <laughs> He's air needing, Mom. Look at you. Oh, that was a cute one. <laughs> Good. Or you tell me when you're good. Booyah! I think that worked really well, do you? Yeah. <laughs> so we did like an inch to attach it to our blue line and then we tossed it over the edge and we taped it as we went. If you guys want to smell what we smell right now, just think of a fresh paved job. When you're driving through a construction zone, the stuff smells like a fresh asphalt pour get too close remember what happened to michelle's arm oh yeah we should have got that on film i can't yep. believe how static like why was this crazy static yep something it's about so it. crazy it's crazy static can you see my hair hold on can we let it hang i think so very very close okay let it hang good i think this is our best one yet yep looks so good Oh, wow. Pretty 
good. Well, it's nothing to write home about, but Alyssa's methods work. So we can keep going on membrane. We, there's a very slim chance we'll get this done tonight. So we need to do a little bit of cleaning on the footing over here. Um, and then dig out a little bit of dirt that's fallen in, or I think it got pushed in. Alyssa's going to troop her on and cut another membrane, I think. Should we stop? What do you think? How hungry are you? Starving Marvin? I'm hungry, but I don't know. It would be nice to... It'd be really nice to be done. Like, we're getting behind. And there's yeah. thunderstorms in the forecast. That's kind of why we're worried now. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. The membrane's definitely a big fish. And we're moving, we're moving pretty good right now, whatever that means. We also lost the productivity of pretty much the entire weekend, so... And a whole day today, backtracking. Mm-hmm. That's why we're behind schedule, which there isn't even a schedule. We're just behind on a schedule exactly. that we don't even have. Cozy. Oh my goodness, you are stinking cute. <laughs> You're a little camera whore, you know that? <laughs> oh my goodness.